Thank you so much, Felicia. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's class. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Um, you guys know what projects we're doing today because you all signed up for the class. Um, but I just want to show a little bit because this project is kind of versatile too. Um, you don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. More so, we're learning about the process today of how to use the Silhouette text tool to create custom vinyl, um, custom vinyl words for your different projects. So this is what I made um, prior to this class today. Um, you might notice that the original photo, um, this smaller one said, oh, holy night. And then the taller one says the stars are brightly shining. And then I added um, this little star in the corner. Um, and these were kind of a set to use as decor in your home or on a fireplace um, for the Christmas season. Um, but this actual project can be used any time of year um, because you can use any text that you want and I'm going to show you how you can use any font that you want and just kind of follow the process along um, for creating a text project um, to go on a hard surface. So that's one thing that I want to talk about first, since this is a beginner class. Um, today we're going to be using vinyl, um, which is kind of like um, a very, very thin plastic, um, but also if you aren't using a hard surfaced item, you can also use heat transfer vinyl, which goes on soft items. So if you're using like a candle holder like this or a water bottle or um, anything that's hard, you're going to use regular vinyl. But if you're using um, like a towel or a shirt or a tote bag or something like that, you would use heat transfer vinyl. Um, so I think it's really fun that you can make both types of projects very, very easily from the comfort of your own home with your silhouette machine. Um, but that's just something that I wanted to go over today. So I want to know, first off, which machine you guys are using. Um, so go ahead and put in the chat what machine you're using and also what would you rate yourself as a silhouette user? Are you a beginner? Are you intermediate or are you advanced? Um, and maybe if you're a beginner, like, did you just buy your machine? Um, have you ever gotten out of the box? Because I know a lot of our users are so intimidated by the software that they haven't even gotten their machines out of the box. So this class is very, very um, basic today. Kay is a Cameo 1 and she's a beginner. Deb is a Cameo 4 just out of the box. Jen is a Cameo 2, but she's intermediate. So this class is still going to help you, Jen, because you can make this project as complex as you want or as easy as you want. Um, and then Donna has the Cameo Pro. Awesome. That's such a fun machine. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. So it looks like we're mostly beginners, and it looks like we kind of have a complete array of machines. We have a Cameo 1, 2 three, four, we have a Cameo Pro and a portrait machine. Is anybody using the Cameo Plus? Because that's the only one we don't have listed today. Um, but so excited to have all of you guys here. Um, so I just wanna talk a little bit about the machines before we get started. So I'm just gonna talk about our models that are currently available for purchase at Michael's. So to start off today, we're using the Cameo 4 machine, which is our flagship model. It's our most popular model here at Silhouette and it cuts 12 inches in width, and then it can cut up to 10 feet in length um, when you're cutting matless, vinyl or heat transfer. And it also cuts the largest array of materials. Um, with the Cameo 4, it comes with the auto blade, which can cut most materials like heat transfer, vinyl, um, what, I just blanked a little bit, cardstock, paper, things like that. Um, and then also you can purchase accessory tools that will go in the second carriage right here that can cut a wider array of materials. So this specifically, before we, are, we, before we started this class, we were filming a felt tutorial and um, this is the rotary blade. Um, so this is an example of a secondary tool that you can purchase um, additionally at Michael's. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different tools that you can use to cut craft foam or leather or felt or fabric or um, just different things like that. So um, this is the Cameo 4. It cuts the most amount of materials. Um, and then we also have the Portrait, which is back here. Somebody said they were using the Portrait 3. And I actually love the Portrait 3 machine um, because it's a lot smaller. It has a smaller footprint. So if you don't have a designated crafting room or something like that, I highly recommend the Portrait 3. 
um, because you can just easily pull it out onto your kitchen counter or your kitchen table or even just pop up a card table and use it on that table. It also is fairly portable. It fits inside of a backpack, which I think is super awesome. And this is great for cutting heat transfer, vinyl, and paper specifically. Also sticker paper or kind of specialty media items that come in sheet form. It's great for the Portrait 3. Um, you also can cut fabric or felt with the Portrait 3, but you would need to use a fabric stabilizer since it only has the one blade compartment. It doesn't have two different blade compartments. Um, so that's the Portrait 3. Both of these machines are Bluetooth compatible, and today I am going to be using the Bluetooth feature. Um, so no cords, aside from my power cord, as you guys can see. Um, I wish we could Bluetooth plug into the power, but we can't do that. Um, so we are going to be using Bluetooth to connect the laptop to the Cameo um, to send our cuts today. We also sell the Cameo Plus at Michael's, which is the exact same as the Cameo 4. It just has a 15 inch cutting width maximum instead of a 12 inch cutting maximum. And then um, let's see who said they have the Cameo Pro. Donna has the Cameo Pro and I'm going to pull it up right here. So this is the Cameo Pro. It is our largest model that we sell here at Silhouette. And it is actually the largest cutting machine on the market right now. Um, so it can cut up to 24 inches in width and also up to 10 feet in length. And it cuts all of the same materials as the Cameo 4. So if you open it up um, and you guys can't see right there, super great because my laptop's right there. Um, but it has the dual carriage system also so that you can use all of your um, accessory blades in the Cameo Pro as well. So you can use this to um, create fabric projects also with the rotary blade and I have done that and it's so fun to make just a bigger scale pillow design or um, anything that you want to make with fabric. I think it would be super fun to make like some little felt stuffed animals um, like a little nativity set maybe for um, Christmas would be super fun. Maybe I'll do that next year. It's a little late this year now. Um, but this is the Cameo Pro and it's super, super fun to use. So all of these machines can be purchased at Michael's um, as well as several Silhouette accessories that I'm gonna be showing you today. Um, also that, um, so somebody just asked, can you do a tutorial for felt? And coincidentally, my next class, or sorry, not my next class, but my class on January 18th is actually going to be a felt banner tutorial. Um, so make sure you guys tune in for that one and register for it. The registration link isn't quite available yet, um, but it's gonna be available within the next couple of days. So um, I'll just go ahead and show it to you guys right here. So um, we are making these fun name banners. So we're gonna use the rotary blade to cut the base pieces of the felt. And then we're also going to cut our letters um, for the name that you're using. And then we can also cut out some embellishments. This one, I added some little flowers. And then we're gonna string it together. And this is actually a no sewing project, which I think is super, super fun. Um, so if you're a beginner crafter, make sure you register for this class, even if the felt intimidates you. Um, it's gonna be super, super fun. And it's gonna be really beginner friendly, um, which I know that like felt and fabric projects don't always seem beginner friendly. So make sure you register for that one. I'm super excited for it. Um, Perfect. Okay, hey, so let's go ahead and get started with our class now. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, this class is very um, software heavy today. Most of what we're gonna be doing is gonna be a screen share in the software. So when I open up my screen share, I can't see the chat as well. So Christina is here and she's gonna help me answer you guys' questions as we go. So don't be afraid to say, can you do that again? Um, I missed how you did that. Um, sometimes I use keyboard shortcuts. I try not to use keyboard shortcuts because I know they're a little bit different depending on which computer that you're using. Um, but if I do use a keyboard shortcut and you get lost and you're like, I don't know how you did that, just make sure to ask Christina. And I'm more than happy to repeat anything um, to demonstrate something again or to just slow down and help you guys really make this project. And I will say that I think it's easiest in these classes 
um, if you watch this class today and then um, like Felicia said, the video is posted on Michael's YouTube channel. Um, so you'll be able to go back and watch the video while you craft along. Um, it can be a little bit fast if you are trying to craft along with this and then you miss some of the tips and tricks that I'm giving you. Um, so I think it's easiest if you just watch today and then craft along tomorrow or the next day um, when you can pause the video as you need to. Um, so that's just a tip for you guys, but if you want to craft along with me and um, try it out, go for it as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start my screen share. And then I'm going to open up Silhouette Studio down here. And you guys will see that today I am using the business version of Silhouette Studio. And some of you may have upgraded software um, from Silhouette Studio, but some of you might not. Some of you might be using the basic version, which is still totally fine. Um, but you'll notice that there is just more tools with the um, business version. So you can upgrade to the designer version, which has um, even more tools than the basic edition, but then the business edition has all of the tools and all of the abilities that is possible with Silhouette. And honestly, with any cutting machine on the market, this software is incredible. I'm actually a graphic designer myself. I went to college for graphic design. And so I'm very familiar with the Adobe programs and this business edition software is amazing for designing things. And um, it's just a one-time payment. You don't have to subscribe or anything like that. So I highly recommend upgrading your software to the business edition at some point so you can get even more extra tools. Everything we're going to be doing today, you can use the basic tools for. Um, but you can upgrade to the business edition and then get even more features. So to start out, we are going to be... I'm actually going to stop my screen share to start out because um, I want to show you guys how I know how big to make my design. So I'm going to take my little candle holder that I'm using today and then I'm just going to gently lay it on its side. And I like to use my silhouette mat to get a good kind of square inch measurement of how big I can make my project. So the silhouette mats have a one inch grid on them, which is actually a little bit hard to see. Um, you can kind of see it on the camera, um, but there's a little bit of a glare. But so I just like to take this um, measured or this mat and then lay it on top of my area that I'm going to be using for my design. And it looks like the actual area, the full area of the design is about five inches tall and four inches wide. Um, we could probably get away with five by five. Um, so let's go ahead just to give us some wiggle room on all the sides. Let's say our max design is going to be four by four. Um, so that is just kind of an easy way. If you don't have a ruler handy, um, you can just use your silhouette mat that has the grid on it. And it's just a helpful tip that I like to share with all of the users um, because I virtually don't even ever use my ruler anymore when I craft because I just like to use the silhouette mat because I'm already using it for the project. So does anybody have any questions about that? Up to this point, I guess, or about any of your machines maybe? Doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share again. And you'll notice that when I open up my Silhouette Studio, everything is set to the default um, settings. So over here in the page setup panel, um, if you're not using the Cameo 4 and maybe you're using your cutting mat list or if you're using a different media size, you can update all of those things over there. But I'm using the default settings, um, which is the Cameo 4 machine, a manual feed, the auto cutting mat, and then I'm using a 12 by 12 media as well. And you can update this at any time. We might update our media size as we move on with the class. I'm not sure yet. Um, but this is kind of the base of what we're going to be working with today. So um, to begin, I want to point out that we are not using any designs today from the design store. But if you do want to purchase designs to embellish your project, you can go click here and go to the store and then they'll show up in your library over here. So um, that is a really fun option 
Um, when I made the star for the original design, I actually used one of these flexi shapes. Um, it's a star that has this one right here. Um, I actually used this, so I didn't even use any designs for this project. I just used the shapes in Silhouette Studio. And the flexi shapes come with the upgraded business edition. Um, and then you have those basic shape tools also um, with the basic edition. Um, I'm just going to open up the chat and pull it to the side so I can see when you guys have questions. All right, so to get started, um, let's go ahead and adjust our media size. Actually, I kind of changed my mind um, and I said that our max media size was five by five. So I'm actually going to make my piece of vinyl be five by five. And when it when I adjusted that, it kind of zoomed in and cropped everything really, really close. But I want you guys to be able to see the full mat. So I'm going to use this little magnifying glass up here to just zoom out um, so we can see our full mat. And I'm going to make my piece of vinyl five by five, even though my max size of my design is going to be four by four. Um, and this is just to give me a little bit of room around the edge and um, also just to make a nice even square when I'm cutting my vinyl and it's just a tiny piece. Um, a lot of you probably have scraps of vinyl that you can use as well. So let's get started with our actual design that we're going to make. So um, when I created the original project, I used the lyrics to the song Oh Holy Night um, for this Christmas project. And I would love to demonstrate another Christmas project for you today. Um, but I would love for somebody to pick what Christmas song we're going to be doing today. Um, so if somebody can put their favorite Christmas song um, in the comments, we are do putting it on a candle holder. So if you want to do a Christmas song associated with like bright or light or something like that, just anybody that would like to pick a Christmas song for me. And I'm just going to wait and see what comes into the chat. And if you guys don't have any, maybe I'll pick two and then you guys can pick which one from the two. <laughs> Let's see, we could do, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head now. We could do Joy to the World on it. We, yeah, we could do the phrase. Oh, Marva wants to see Oh Holy Night. So um, I did make Oh Holy Night initially. So do you guys want to see Joy to the World or Oh Holy Night? Go ahead and put in the chat. Maybe one other person can put in the chat and then we can move on. <laughs> or Marva just gets to pick. Okay, Oh Holy Night. Oh, it's unanimous. We all want to see Oh Holy Night. Perfect. It's one of my favorite Christmas songs, which is why I picked it initially. So um, we're just going to do the phrase, Oh Holy Night, because like I said, my um, other taller one says the stars are brightly shining. Um, so we're just going to do a couple words on here. And then um, I'll show you how I arrange them and how I move them around and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click my text tool right here. And this is pretty much the base of everything that we're doing for this class today. Um, we're going to be using the text tool. So to begin, I am just going to type, oh, holy night. And I did, um, initially, I did everything in capital letters, but I'm going to use a couple different fonts to give you guys some options of how you'd like it to look. So I am not going to do all capital letters initially. Um, and we might change it eventually um, in the end, but I just am going to type each word and put it on its own line. And by default, it just will um, begin typing um, a basic font on your computer, um, whatever your um, default font is set to on your computer, like when you use other typing programs. Um, so mine is Arial, so it typed this in Arial, but I'm not necessarily going to be using Arial today. So I'm just going to copy my text by um, holding down my option key or my alt key, depending on what brand of computer that you're using, and just dragging that over. If you don't want to use a keyboard shortcut, you can right click and select copy, and then you can right click and select paste. And I'm going to do three different font options for you guys to see. And then um, we can pick which one we want to use for our actual project. So I'm go I am going to color these first so you can see them a little bit better. So I'm just going to click one and then hold down shift and click the other ones. 
And then I'm going to open my little artist panel or artist palette over here, which is my fill panel. And then I'm just going to make them red just so it's nice and bright and you guys can see it. And I apologize, I'm getting over a cold, so I know my nose is still a little bit runny. Um, and then I'm just going to pick some different fonts for these different um, text pieces. So I'm going to select all of my text and you can just do that by double clicking it until it gets this like cursor bar and then you can just drag over the top of your text. And then I'm just going to open this drop down menu right here and you can use any design that you have on your computer. So we have hundreds of fonts, probably thousands of fonts in the Silhouette Design Store that you can pick from. But you can also use any font that you have on your computer. So Bodoni is a really, really popular common font um, that most of you probably have on your computer. Um, Arial obviously is really popular. Comic Sans is another one that's on most computers. Um, but also this Cher Cherion Bold. I know I bought that one from the Silhouette Design Store. Um, most of my, my cute cursive fonts I bought from the Silhouette Design Store. Um, so let's try this one. This one's called Christy Smiley. And that's what that one looks like. Very cute, very fun. Um, I actually think I did use Arial Bold for my actual um, design my actual project that I made. And as you can see, um, you can just select Arial and then you can click this little bold option right here. And let me see, maybe that's not the font that, oh, it's because mine's in all capitals. So um, yeah, I did use Arial Bold, which was honestly really pretty. I really like sans serif fonts like this um, when they're all capitalized. Here, I'll, we'll capitalize this one so you guys can see what it looks like. That's how I made my last um, project. Okay, so um, Christina asked, when would you use serif versus sans serif? And it's honestly just up to your personal preference. Um, I, like I said, I'm a graphic designer and I actually just really love sans serif fonts. So fonts that don't have, you know, like little curlies or little, um, I'll show you, um, this is, I'll put a serif font on this one in case you guys don't know what that means. Um, so American Typewriter is a serif font and it just has like these little accents kind of on the fonts. Um, and like I said, it's really just personal preference. I, um, when I design things and make projects, and this project to me, it looks really modern farmhousey, and I really like modern farmhouse style things. And so um, I think just a nice clean font looks like that type of kind of style, um, but you can also use this one and it's just kind of up to your personal preference. So someone said, what's the name of the typography for the first text? And that is actually um, a good question overall, the style, but the actual font I purchased from the design store and it is called Christy Smiley. So I know this one's in the Silhouette Design Store. These two, American Typewriter and um, Arial, those are just pretty standard fonts that most of you guys probably have on your computer already. Um, and if you don't, they're both Adobe fonts. So those can be purchased um, by Adobe if you don't have them already. But most computers would come with these fonts because they're pretty standard. Um, so which one do you guys want? We have the cursive font, we have the, we'll call this the block letter font or the typewriter font. Um, so go ahead and type and everybody can give me their opinion and we'll just kind of take the one that is most popular. Okay, Deb said cursive. Angelia said cursive, perfect. Oh, and Christina put the link to the Christy Smiley font, which it looks like that's what we're gonna use. Okay, Marva said cursive also. Um, so awesome, I'm super glad that we kind of showed you guys some different options because when I'm making font projects, I always like to kind of go through this process and do it with three different fonts just to kind of see how it looks and to um, pick the one that I like the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these ones by just clicking it and then pressing the delete key on my keyboard. 
And one thing that I will say with cursive fonts that can be a little bit tricky, so I'm actually glad you guys picked this one so I can show you guys um, some tips, is you'll see that these letters obviously like dip down a lot or kind of have a little bit of embellishment. And um, we don't want it to be super far apart, that being said. So I'm gonna show you guys how to kind of arrange this so it's still close together, um, but so your letters don't overlap, like the bottom of this letter doesn't overlap the top of this letter. So after I've selected the font that I want to use and I've typed out my text, I'm actually going to convert this um, to shapes instead of letters. So after we do this step, we're not gonna be able to change our text anymore. So make sure you have your text the way you want it. Um, but then what we're gonna do is we're going to right click and ungroup our text and that will make each letter a shape instead of each um, letter forming this word and being a letter. Now um, it's a shape. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, but when it's a text box, you can't arrange these words by themselves. Um, and so you need to make them shapes so that the computer is reading them as shapes rather than um, letters and words. So at this point, um, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this. And I'm actually going to change the color of these. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle over all of my pieces and make it green. And I wanna show you guys a important step right here. So you can see right here, um, that it overlaps a little bit where our letters come together with cursive fonts. And if you do not do this next step, it will actually cut right here on the O and we don't wanna do that. We want these cursive words to cut as one piece instead of cutting individual letters. So what we need to do is we need to select all of those letters and then we're going to go over to this panel right here, which is the modify panel. So it looks like a little rectangle and a circle overlapping. And then um, a couple different options pop up, but we are going to do weld. And now when we zoom in, you can see that this is all just one shape. Um, and if you aren't doing a cursive font, you don't have to weld your letters together. Um, but if you're using a cursive font, you wanna make sure to do that so that you can, um, not have cuts in your actual pieces. So I'm just gonna repeat that step with my other two phrases, or my other two words, sorry. And obviously the little I won't weld because it's not overlapping. So in that case, this is still by itself. So I just need to click that I and then hold down shift and click the night. And then I'm just going to right click and select group. And now that dot of the eye will move with my piece. So does anybody have any questions up to this point of any of the tools that I've used or just any questions in general, I guess? If you do, put them in the chat and Christina will let me know. Um, but now I'm gonna show you kind of how we can go about stylistically um, changing these words. Um, so one thing that I like to do when I'm using a cursive font is I like to make one word bigger than the other ones, especially if I'm doing like three lines. Um, so for this one, I'm going to make wholly larger than the, the other two words. And you'll see in a second why I'm doing that. Um, but so I'm just going to click the word and then use these little corner handles to make wholly bigger. And then um, I am going to put night up here. And I'm actually, I want night to fit kind of inside um, right here. But right now, if I do that, then it's gonna overlap a little bit. So I'm just going to drag night a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. And this is really, really close. So I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. And this part is all stylistically your own choice. So um, there's no right or wrong way to do this part of the project. It's just honestly personal preference. Um, and then O right here, um, I kind of wanna see how it would look really small right here, because O isn't as important as the other words, right? 
I'm just going to put this maybe in here. And then you also can rotate your words by using this little green um, thing at the top. I think that's a little bit too small. Um, so I'm actually going to undo by doing Command Z or Control V. And this is the default size. So I'm just going to try a couple other things. We could center it as well. Put it over here. What do you guys think? Do you think you like it over here to the left better or in the middle? And I think I'm gonna make it the same height as this one. So when I click night, it's 1.4 inches tall. So I think I'm going to um, alter this to be 1.4 inches tall and just see what we think of it. Oh, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna make that 1.4 inches tall. And that is a lot bigger. <laughs> so um, we're gonna make that a little bit smaller. But I think actually we can kind of put it right here. Mm. You know what, we're just gonna center it. Short words are really, really tricky, I've found. But you guys like it centered, so. I'm gonna kind of try and make it, yeah, that's a good size comparison um, to the first one. All right, so to center something, um, first off, I like holy and night like this, where the Y kind of loops through like this. So I'm gonna group these two pieces by clicking one and then clicking the other one and right clicking and then selecting group. But then to center O on top of these two, I'm going to click O and then I'm going to click my group. I'm gonna come up here to my center and align tool and I'm going to align center. And that will put my O right there. And I actually am just going to not have it be exactly centered, um, just because I don't. I want it to be a little bit spaced. So um, here is our text. And just because um, we have time to, and since we decided on the cursive font, I would actually like to add a little bit of embellishment over here and demonstrate to you guys how I would do that. So I'm gonna go to the library and just see what I already have um, in here. I just want something simple like a Christmas tree or um, this is kind of fun, these Christmas leaves. Maybe I'll take, I think I'm gonna take some leaves from this Christmas leaf. So I'm gonna double click this um, Merry Christmas wreath. Oh, I opened a different one. Perfect. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then come over here. And I'm actually just going to ungroup this design. So I'm going to right click and select ungroup. And then I'm just going to select a couple pieces that I like. So I like this leaf and I like this leaf and this one. We'll grab these three. And then I'm just going to drag over the top and delete the rest. So I know that can be a little bit tricky, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can take pieces from other designs too um, that are really small. So now I'm just gonna resize these little leaves a little bit. I actually kind of like that one right there. And then this one, I actually want it facing inward. So I'm gonna right click and then I'm just going to click flip horizontally and it faces inward now. So I just need to rotate it a little bit. And then I'm gonna make it smaller. Let's see. Oh yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay. And then um, these are all gonna cut in one color. You could make this a two color design if you wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna make it all one color. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen share actually. And I wanna know what color you guys want me to do this on. Um, this project. So before I did black, like I said, I was kind of going for that modern farmhouse vibe and matte black is completely the modern farmhouse style. So that's why I chose matte black. Um, but today I have some glossy black, I have matte red, and then I have some green. So go ahead um, in the chat, put which color you guys would like to see me cut this project as.
Okay, Deb said red. Man, you guys are all on the same wavelength. You all want the same project, which is great. Okay, so we're gonna be using red today. Um, actually, let me make sure our red piece is big enough. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Oh, it is big enough, we're good, okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this up on my mat now. So I'm going to peel off my blue mat cover. And then um, I'm just going, I need a five by five square. And this does, or this vinyl has a grid on the back that is an inch each. Um, so I am actually going to count five squares. It looks like in, last time we used this, we didn't cut it exactly on the grid. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little bit bigger than five just because I want it to be um, that size. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna cut both sides actually to make it exactly five by five. So I'm gonna cut five squares wide and five squares um, length also. And if you guys have any questions up to this point, go ahead and put them in the chat. I also just want to know how you guys are feeling about this project. Does it seem easy, like you could do it? Are you learning some things? Um, do you want to share, or is there anything else you'd like me to demonstrate or share? Um, just go ahead and put that. Hmm. That is a good question, Deb. Um, okay, so um, we would draw an arc with this tool, I believe. Oh, sorry. I have actually never done that. So Christina's helping me out on this one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is a fairly, I'm sorry, I lost my Zoom window. There we go. Um, so it is a fairly advanced tool or a fairly advanced um, process that you would do, but you would draw an arc um, with like the pen tool and then you would, sorry, an arced line. Oh, so this one, you would draw an arced line and then Sorry, Christina, do you want to come demonstrate this? We'll okay, we will do it another time. I, okay. Okay, sorry about that, Deb. I am actually just not familiar with that process because it's not something that I've ever done before. Um, but we are going to demonstrate that another time. So thank you for your question. And I apologize that I can't give you an answer right now. Um, so I'm going to stop my screen share. Okay, um, Kay said this is actually a lot easier than I feared. So I'm glad, Kay, that's so good because I'm just trying to keep it really, really basic for us. Um, so I'm just gonna, wow, we chose red and you can barely see it on our red tablecloth. <laughs> but um, I just lined my um, project, or not my project, my vinyl up in the corner. And now I'm gonna load it into my machine. So to load it into the machine, we're just gonna press this upward arrow. And once it starts blinking, this sensor right here, um, which is a tiny little black square, um, will read that we have the mat there. And then um, we will load this edge of the machine. We'll um, line this edge of the machine up with this um, little gray line right here. So I'm gonna press the upward arrow and then I'm gonna load that. And you just hold it until it loads, just wait a second. And by loading this way, you can feed it with both hands and get a nice even load. So now I'm gonna go back into Silhouette Studio and I'm gonna group all of this together for you by drawing a rectangle over the top and then right clicking and selecting group. And right now we can drag it onto our square and we can see that it's too big for our square, which this is why it's a good idea to change your media if you're not using 12 by 12 media, so you can see the actual size. Um, so this is 4.6 inches wide and 5.5 inches tall. So since it's taller than it is wider, we're going to adjust the um, height instead of adjusting the width. So make sure that you have it selected by clicking on it. And then, 
that this padlock is closed. And then we're just going to type four into our height and it will make it 3.3 .3 inches wide. Um, if you want to, if you're not scared about distorting your text or anything, you can actually stretch it a little bit by pulling, um, pulling wide, not pulling your corners, um, but pulling from one side or the other. And I think I am actually going to do that a little bit um, just so that it takes up more of our space. So now we can click this button right here, which is next to our center and align tool, and it will center it to our page that we're cutting on. Um, so this is what we're gonna be cutting today. Um, so now we can just go to the send panel. Okay, mini, um, or whoever this is in the, from the Mini May Foundation just joined, and that's okay that you're totally late. Um, we're just excited that you came and joined us. So thanks so much. Um, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, select the material we're using and we actually are using matte vinyl still. The red vinyl I'm using is matte. Um, so I'm going to leave that the same and then it's my machine is reading my auto blade and so I don't need to change any of this. One thing that I want to point out if for some reason um, your design when you come to the send panel does not have that thick red outline around it it is defaulting to a no cut right here. And sometimes designers, when they design things um, for different reasons, accidentally make it a no cut or intentionally if it's a print and cut design. Um, so you can just select your design and then click cut right here. And it will make it so that thick red outline shows up again and it's ready to be cut. So um, does anybody have any questions? But before we um, actually cut this. Okay, it doesn't look like we do. So I'm just going to go ahead and click send at the bottom of my screen. Okay, and Deb, it looks like Christina gave you a rundown of how to do that. So she was trying to explain to me how to do it um, from the back of the room and I just was not processing it. So I'm so sorry about that, but I'm so glad she could help you out with it. And I'm sure there are YouTube videos also on how to do that, whether it's been produced by us at Silhouette directly or um, other Silhouette users. I'm sure if you just type in to Google or YouTube how to do that, I'm sure you can find a tutorial. I think that is something that I've learned with the Silhouette machine is there's always something you can still learn no matter what. So um, you'll notice that when the machine started cutting, um, the blade came over here and did a hard click and then it clicked once. And that was the blade adjusting to a number one. Um, I actually generally like to cut my vinyl on a number two blade depth. Um, that's just my personal preference. But when this is done, um, we'll check it to make sure that it cut through. And if it didn't quite cut through all the way, we can send it for another pass as well. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just check this to make sure that it cut. Um, so I'm just going to take the silhouette hook tool. This does not come with the machine, but you can purchase it or you can use any hook tool that you can find at Michael's. And then I'm just going to try and take out a piece of vinyl. And it looks like it, it cut all right. It didn't cut super, super cleanly. Um, so I'm actually going to send this for another pass. And I'm glad that I demonstrated this because this is actually something that happens pretty frequently for me with vinyl um, because every vinyl is so different that you can purchase. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my um, screen and I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna press send again. And the reason that I checked it before I unloaded it is because now that I um, checked it and sent it to cut, it's going to cut in the exact same place that it cut before. Um, if I would have unloaded it and reloaded it again, even though I'm lining it up with this gray line, since the lines are so thin, it might not cut in the exact same spot. So just make sure to always check your materials that they cut all the way through um, before you unload your vinyl. 
um, or your paper or your felt or anything like that, just so you don't waste materials. Um, because if I had gone to weed this and found out then that it didn't cut all the way through, I would just have to cut another piece of vinyl, which I don't necessarily want to do. Um, so we're just going to let it cut again. Does anybody have any questions like that? So I know a lot of you are beginner silhouette users and um, next, my next class actually on January 11th is just a complete intro to silhouette, um, silhouette in general. So even if this class seems a little bit complex for you um, with using the text tool, we are going to be doing another class on January 11th that is very, very easy. Um, so you can register for that one as well and Christina can put the link for that in the chat. Um, so I'm just going to check this one again. And it looks like it cut good this time. Yeah, okay, so this is good. So I'm going to go ahead and unload it. And I realized on this red, you guys might have a hard time seeing me weed it. Um, maybe I'll put a piece of paper underneath it or like a book or something. Yeah, just so you guys can see um, the lines a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start at the corner right here. And vinyl can be a little bit tricky to weed um, just because it's sticky. And so sometimes our pieces want to stick together. Um, so I'm just going to try and go really, really slow. actually did not cut quite as well as I would have wanted it to. I might cut it again. Okay. This is just my fault. The sending it again did not work as well as I thought it was going to. Um, so I'm just going to cut it on a two again. So um, I actually don't have enough red. I apologize. So I'm going to do it in the black this time. Sorry about that, guys. I wish um, I would have remembered to just cut it on a two. So one, two, three, four. I'm just going to cut. And this is Orical 651 vinyl. And this vinyl is actually my favorite to use. It cuts really, really easily. Um, and it just gives you a really, really nice, clean cut. So this is my favorite vinyl. I know you guys wanted to see red, but I think this will look very cute in black as well. And sometimes when we're doing crafting, it just doesn't go perfectly every time, right? I feel like it especially doesn't go perfectly when I'm teaching a class, but. Okay, and I just changed my blade depth to a two. So thank you guys for being patient with me. Yes, it is true. Last, no, it, this has, this was two years ago and I was very, very new to teaching silhouette classes. I'd been working here for a couple months 
and I was doing a vinyl class. And when I started, vinyl was just so hard for me to use. I don't know why, because honestly, it's not hard to use, but I just had a really hard time with it. And I was teaching a class of snowflake and snowflakes, you know, are really, really tiny, really, really dainty. And um, they just kept tearing and tearing. And I just wasn't being gentle enough with them. Um, but it was quite an experience to be teaching that class. All right, so. Um, so I didn't because Deb, when I was in Silhouette Studio, I adjusted the blade depth. So I'll just show that real quick. Um, so by default, vinyl will cut on a one, um, but mine didn't cut through all the way. It's probably just because um, my blade isn't brand new and that vinyl, um, like I said, every vinyl is different. So I didn't have to send it for two passes because I just upped my blade depth from a one to a two on Silhouette Studio. And I didn't show that. I forgot to screen share for that for you guys. So, um, but this one seems like it cut a lot better. So now I'm going to pull from the side. And as you can see, it's already peeling a lot better than my last one did. And sometimes vinyl peels really, really easy like this. And sometimes it's a little bit trickier. Um, but as long as you just kind of try and go slow, you should be pretty good. And make sure like um, I'm pulling the eye right now, make sure that that little dot stays on our piece. But like I said, Oracle 651 is I think the best vinyl out there. And I know you can purchase that at Michael's. Um, and it just cuts really, really easily and is a really great product for projects. And it stays on projects really, really well. So now that I pulled that big piece off, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all my small pieces and um, just take them out. This process is called weeding, if you're not familiar with it. Really? I think heat transfer is actually the easiest to use of the three. Um, and paper, little tiny designs can be really, really difficult. Um, I grew up paper crafting with my mom. So I think that's why I'm more comfortable with paper than um, heat or than vinyl. Um, because I, I don't think I really made a vinyl project until I started working at Silhouette which is crazy because now I do it all the time and I love doing vinyl projects. And I think it's like modern day crafting um, is vinyl because you can use vinyl to personalize anything, which I imagine is why a lot of you joined this class today. Um, my mom actually gifted my, um, my son and my nephews some fun like cars for Christmas. Well, she's gifting them to them this week. And, um, she bought some little tote boxes that um, the cars go in, like a, it's a car set. And so she wanted me to make vinyl that say like Bennett's car box or like something like that. And um, so we did that for the boys for Christmas and they turned out super, super cute. Um, so that's a really, really easy way to use vinyl um, in your house to organize your toys or your spices or your pantry or anything like that. Um, and this is just, you would follow the exact same process that we use today um, to do that. So really, really fun. And I'm going to go ahead and cut. Up. So this is transfer tape. And this is what we use to stick our vinyl to our project. So I'm just going to cut a piece. I'm using the Oracal or Aura tape which is by Oracle, and um, it you can buy it at Michael's, and I think it is the best transfer tape out there. I have the best luck with it as someone who struggled with vinyl from the beginning, um, and this is reusable as long as you save the backing. So to use it, you just I like to fold a corner to separate the tape from the backing, and then pull that off, and then flatten your um, design with your hands, 
and then lay the middle down first and then pull the sides a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the Silhouette Scraper tool, which looks like this to just get any air bubbles out. Um, but if you don't have a scraper tool, you can use anything that has a hard edge, like a bone folder, if you have one of those in your craft room, or also even just a credit card or um, any sort of card, gift card, driver's license, things like that. Let's see, Jen said, I just finished labeling a crafting tote for my granddaughter, labeled paper, glue, coloring books. That is so much fun, Jen. You're a pro at this class then. <laughs> you could have taught this class. <laughs> awesome, so now I'm just going to peel my vinyl or peel my backing away from this project. And if it doesn't stick to your paper super, super well, you can fold your backing as you go. And I found that that works best for me when I'm doing projects just to make it so it doesn't cling to the um, backing paper. And sometimes it just clings to that backing paper because it's a sticky material. Um, vinyl is just sticky um, by nature. And so sometimes it just sticks um, even though it's kind of like a waxy paper finish. Sometimes it still sticks, but if it sticks good to the backing, that means it's going to stick great to your actual project. So. Does anybody have any questions about transferring your design? I know we're almost done with our class, so thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you've learned a lot. Hey. And I'm just going to go ahead and put these right here so my um, thing doesn't roll when I'm putting my vinyl down. And you can use pencils too, or pens. I've seen a lot of people do that. And then I'm just going to take my transfer tape and my design, and then I'm just gonna center it between my two bars. And then I'm just going to press down. You can either use your fingers or you can use your little scraper tool or credit card or whatever you have on hand. And then we're just going to peel away the transfer tape. This is my favorite part. It always is so fun. Okay, and this is our final project. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, we have one more minute. So this is you guys' last chance to ask any questions that you might have. I'm just going to set this next to our other one um, so you can kind of see just the difference of what they can look like. Um, but I did purchase these lantern candle holders from Michaels a couple weeks ago. Um, so you can buy those exact ones at Michaels or you can find a different item that you want to put vinyl on um, in their store. You could do pencil boxes um, for Christmas. You can do stockings with heat transfer. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. I had so much fun teaching you and I hope to see you guys in future classes. Remember on January 11th, I'm teaching a intro to silhouette class that's gonna be very, very similar to this class. We just won't be using the text tool. We're gonna be cutting a design from the design store. So it's gonna be very similar, but you can always join us for that class if you're new and want a refresher. And then we're also gonna be doing a rotary blade felt class on January 18th that you can join as well. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, and I hope you have an awesome holiday season. Thanks.